Welcome. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living at Greater Las Vegas. I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. My name is Reverend Claire Summerhill, 
I'm one of the ministers here at our center. And as one of our ministers, I have the privilege of sharing some time with you on these Wednesday evenings in our midweek service. We come together to learn, to share, to remember. It's so easy for us to forget who we are, to forget that we are the divine in expression and that we have all abundance available to us, the universe waiting to pour itself out. So we come together to do that. We'd like to start with an invocation. As I think of an invocation, it's our announcement to the universe that we're awake, that we're paying attention, that we are ready. Gives us a moment to pause, to be still, to still our thoughts, to set aside distractions, and open ourselves to hear and to learn, and tonight to be inspired. So let's go into prayer. And this is what I know. I know tonight's service unfolds perfectly. Each person here, each person listening, hears what they need to, remembers what they've forgotten, feels a sense of love and connection. We give thanks for the opportunity to come together. We give thanks for the technology that allows us to share this time. We give thanks for our center. We give thanks for each other. Knowing all is well, we let this be by saying together, and so it is. So, we are in the middle of a series on the creative process. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, studied religions and philosophies and traditions through the ages, and from those, tried to distill the golden threads of truth, he called them, those truths that showed up in all the different traditions. And as he looked at those, he put together a plan, a guide for us to create the lives we want. And much of what he learned was about the creative process. And he spent much of his life teaching people to use this power that we have to create, to use our thoughts to create what we envision and bring it into form in the world. And so our purpose in this series is to support you in your own creative endeavors, to take on what you want to create and give you the tools that you need as you seek to create what you want to bring into the world. And at the same time, and as an example of how this process works, we are inviting you to join our center in an incredible creative project that we're embarking on. We as a center are in the process of being open, ready, and willing to accept the right and perfect minister for our center to be our guide, our partner along this path of awakening. We're also in the process of envisioning and bringing into form a new place to meet and come together. And we're also looking at what, who we are as a center, what's important to us, what we want, how we are going to do our part in creating a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. So we are using our creative process as a center as an example. So you can support us and help us and join with us. You can also use the ideas that we're talking about in your own creative process as you work to create what you want in your life. My talk tonight is called One Sudden Brilliant Idea. And we're looking at the idea of inspiration. What does it mean to inspire and to be inspired and how does that relate to this idea of the creative process and using our creative powers to bring things from the realm of thought, the realm of idea, into form before us where we can see them and enjoy them? Part of this process 
is creating a mental equivalent. That's what Ernest Holmes called it, a mental equivalent. Now, I like to think of a mental equivalent as a mold. So with our thoughts, we create a mold. And the infinite God stuff, infinite creative energy, pours itself into that mold. Now, that energy can take any form. It waits for us to create the mold so it knows what shape we want it to take. Another way I like to think of it is as a nucleus. We create a nucleus that draws to it more of the same, and then it grows into what we envision. Now, our center created a mental equivalent for the, what we are creating. We created a mental equivalent for what we see as our new right and perfect minister, the minister we are ready to welcome and accept. And the first thing that came to us as we started to focus on this, to vision on it, to look at it, was I know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wholeness. Remember, when we stand in truth, when we stand in that place of love, we can speak our word and the universe will respond. Now, the, one of the next parts of our mental equivalent said, as I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as a loving, compassionate, inspired leader. We see this, we are doing our part to call this into form. Now, if you're interested in seeing our mental equivalent, it's posted on our website, and it's under the link that says, My New Minister's Sacred Covenant. And you can look at that, and you can use that as a template for your own life. In your own life, you look at what you're trying to create. You could start it out with, I know, and then what it's revealed as. So say, for instance, you're in a place where you, you're looking for a new place to use your talents and gifts, to make a living, to support those you love. The employment you have is either non-existent or it's not really providing what you need. And you want to create that. So the first thing you say, you might say, I know that my new employment is a revelation of God as, and then what is it? What shows up there? Now this may take some thinking. Maybe you want your new employment to show up as a revelation of God as abundance. Maybe you want your new employment to show up as a revelation of God as excitement, as peace, as the ability to make a difference. So think about that. So that's the first part of the creation, the creative process. Start out by creating this mental equivalent. What is it? Now, <clears throat> I want to make it clear that we are creating all the time. We can't not create. It's our nature. And when you look around you at your life and what you see, that's what you've created. Now, some of us may say, well, wait a minute. I don't, I don't really like what I see. If I really had the power to create whatever I wanted, I wouldn't have created this. No, we are using our creative powers, and there's nothing bad, there's nothing wrong about that. It's just that we're not using our power in the way we want. I have a, a favorite story that perhaps you've heard me tell before about the man who died and went to heaven. And when he arrived at the pearly gates and St. Peter was there, St. Peter said, oh, welcome, welcome, we have a place prepared for you. And he took the man and led him to... Um, a house and said, here's your, your place in heaven. And the man went in and he was a little disappointed because it was a little dingy. Um, there was his, his recliner, a recliner just like his on earth that was broken and there was the same grease spot on the wall. Hmm. He went outside and there was his same car from earth, the one 
with the, the window that didn't work, that kind of made a strange noise, and he drove it to work, there was his same crowded cubicle. So he kind of put up with it for a couple of days because that's the kind of person he was. But then he'd had it. So he went to St. Peter. He said, what's up with this? It's supposed to be heaven. And Peter said, oh, that's the way you'd arrange things on earth. So we thought that was how you wanted it. See, that's how the universe thinks. I've given you everything. You can create whatever you want. And yet, so often, we're, we're satisfied or we accept less. So if you look around your life and you think, no, this isn't what I want to create, don't, don't blame yourself. Don't make yourself wrong. Say, okay, starting now, I'm going to create a new mental equivalent. An equivalent as I create my life. So the great work of our life is to create our lives as a work of art. So, Ernest Holmes taught this over and over again in so many ways. Here's one thing he said that I really like. We cannot say that one thought is creative while another is not. We must say that all thought is creative according to the nature, impulse, emotion, or conviction behind the thought. Thought creates a mold in the subjective in which the idea is accepted and poured and sets power in motion in accordance with the thought. You know, Jesus said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Father represents the universe, ready to pour out as much good upon us as we can accept the kingdom, the expansiveness, all there is. Same thing in the prodigal son story. As the boy came back from wandering, the father, who also represents the universe, rushed out, unable to hold itself back, to wrap him in a robe, put a ring on his finger, prepare a feast. And then the older son, who was unhappy, the father said to him, all that I have is yours. That's, that's the universe. So, if you look at our center's sacred covenant, it's called a covenant because it's our promise that we will do our part to allow this to come into our lives. We often think if we don't have something, it's because of something out there. We want that. Why isn't it coming to us? But it's because we have not opened ourselves. We're not ready to accept it. So the covenant, the reason it's called a covenant is because it's our promise. I'm going to do the best I can to prepare myself to be ready to accept this good that I see. So let's look at the idea of inspiration. Now, in, in the old version of the English language, inspiration meant to put life or spirit into the human body in Inspiration, the spirit coming in. And you think of our words aspiration or respiration. They have to do with breathing. And in, in the Genesis creation myth, of course, it says that God breathed the breath of life into the humans and they became living souls. This is the power of, of inspiration to bring us alive, to bring us fully alive as human beings with our full creative powers. You know, when we often, as we start a meditation, we start by focusing on our breathing, on breathing in good, breathing in energy, our breath going in and out. And think of how our breath works. You know, you know, we bring, the oxygen comes into our lungs. The blood picks up the oxygen and carries it to every cell in our body where it's needed for us to prosper, to live to be fully alive. That's how inspiration is. So we breathe in that spirit. It spreads throughout our body. 
So as we look at our center and look at what we're evolving into, what we want to evolve into, we're looking at this sense of inspiration. And I wanted to focus on the idea of we have to take that in. It's not ever forced on us. The, the universe never, ever gives us more than we can accept. Now, the example I like is the example of us going to the universe. We're hungry, say. And we say, please, I don't eat much. Just give me a dried up crust of an old peanut butter sandwich. You know what time I, type I mean, right? And your kid's lunch bag, it's been in the bottom of their backpack, you know? So just give me that, that'll be enough. Now, the universe, and you know, it's okay to think of the universe as a person. We know it's not, but you know, imagine the universe going, well, okay. The universe always says yes. That's what we ask for. The universe says, okay, here you are. But, you know, I had this banquet planned for you. And you were going to have the place of honor. It's not the universe. It's us. It's what we are able to accept, whether it's in our own lives and now in the life of our center. What are we able to accept. So the challenge is to increase that which we're able to accept. So an inspired leader. What is an inspired leader? An inspired leader is one who can take a vision and translate it into reality. An inspired leader is far-seeing. An inspired leader sees beyond appearances. We also have the idea of light when we think of inspiration. And an inspired leader being able to see more because of the greater light. So I want to share a story with you, an old Buddhist tale about an inspired leader who saw beyond appearances. So this is a story about a man named Papakara. Now, Papakara meant the evil one, the wicked one, and he was a terrible person. He survived by robbing villagers and taking their crops and their animals. If you crossed him, he'd leave you bleeding. He didn't care about anyone. Even dogs ran away from him, and everyone knew him as Papakara. So the story goes that one day, in early spring, the leaves were just starting to come out on the trees. He was resting near a stream in the place that he lived. And we don't know what happened to him. But he looked out, and he saw the light reflecting off the water. And he saw, he heard a bird song that he'd never heard before. And an idea came into his mind that he wanted to go and find the Buddha. And he wanted to ask the Buddha to initiate him into the path to enlightenment. Now, the path to initiation and being initiated was a, a long and difficult path. And there were people that met and studied with the Buddha for a long time and never reached that point. The, the Buddha, of course, knew the nature of ultimate reality and had experienced that. And the path, being initiated on that path, meant you were ready for that kind of knowing, that kind of understanding. And, and there were many who sought that who were never accepted to be initiated. So Papakara started toward where the Buddha lived with his, his followers and students. And he was afraid as he came that if he came up to the front gate, they would turn him away because of his reputation. So he had the idea that he would go around to the, the back of the compound where the forest was and he would 
climb over the back wall and then maybe he could find the Buddha and speak to him before the people kicked him out. So he did that, but as he was climbing over the wall, two of the Buddha's followers saw him and grabbed him and said, what are you doing here? And he explained what he was doing here. I want to study with the Buddha. I want to become a samyasi, a holy man. And I want to be initiated into the path toward enlightenment. And of course they laughed and they said no, and they were ready to turn him away. But one of the men said, let's, let's take him to Sariputra, the wise man. And Sariputra, it was said, had the gift of being able to look into your past lives. Let's ask Sariputra to look into his past lives and see if he ever has done anything good that would justify him being allowed to come here and learn and study with the Buddha. So they took him to Sariputra and he looked, he went into a kind of a trance, you know, and looked back in history. And as he came out, he said, he was frightened actually, he said, I went back and looked at a thousand lives and in every one, he was just as awful, just as bad. Take him away, cast him out. We don't want him here. So they took him to the front gate to send him on his way. And it just so happened that the Buddha had been begging in the village and was coming back right then. And he said, what are you doing here? And Papakara said, I want to study with you. I want to be initiated. And the Buddha took his hand and led him into the Buddha's hut where he lived and began to teach him. And in three days, the Buddha said he was ready to be initiated. And he was initiated into the path. Well, the other followers were upset. And <clears throat> they said, <clears throat> why do we even bother like looking at past lives? Um, if it's not going to make any difference. And why have we bothered like to stay here and study so long and work so hard when we can't be initiated? And he comes in in three days. Buddha says he's ready. So Buddha, the compassionate one, the wise one, said this to the followers. Yes, you looked into the past and you saw many lives of misery and, ev and evil, but you did not look into the future. When a person awakens to his true nature and makes a conscious, deliberate, intentional choice to enter a new life, a change occurs in that moment. That decision is decisive. No one is bound by what has gone before. It was the purity and integrity of this man's desire that let me know that he was ready to be initiated into the path to enlightenment. And then the Buddha went on. Many of you, he said, have been here for some time, seeking, claiming that you're seeking enlightenment. But what you're really seeking is my approval, the approval of the other people here, power, control, None of you have ever once come close to Johanna as this man has. And then the Buddha told them, purify your desires and then you too will be ready. Be clear on what you want and then you can be initiated. Now, of course, we know that there's only one story. And it shows up everywhere. It's the story of our awakening. Our, the story of our awakening to who we really are. And of course, that's what happened with Papakara. Didn't matter what the past was. Doesn't matter how many challenges, things we've labeled mistakes in the past have happened. What matters is today, what we decide today, what we commit to today, the mental equivalent, the mold we create with our thoughts today, and a welcome that creative energy to come into it. So remember, when we're inspired, we breathe in the energy of God. 
we take it in and then it's ready to spread out as we direct. This is true in your own lives as you use your creative power and increase your ability to use that to create what you see, what you envision, what you imagine for your life. And it's true right now in the life of our center. It's about us expanding what we can accept. The universe can only give us what we can accept. Are we asking for a dried up peanut butter sandwich when the universe has a banquet for us? That's our, that's our part in this creative process. As we prepare ourselves as a community to accept Spirit's highest idea for our center, more and more good comes to us. It's, it's our job, it's our task, our challenge to be ready. The universe is already there giving giving out of its infinite supply. We could summarize all of this in a simple statement that you've heard many times that Ernest Holmes made. There's a power in the universe and you can use it. In this space wide open possibility, being ready to be inspired. Let's take a moment and go into prayer together. This is what I know. I know that an infinite, powerful, positive, creative energy surrounds me, surrounds all of us, pushing trying to express through us, wanting only good, an expansive view, and that this power, this energy is ready to take whatever shape we create with our thoughts. This is what it means to be human to have this creative power for our own lives, for the life of our center. As this is true for me, this is true for everyone listening. There's no place where this energy is not. It's not forever bursting out into form in amazing ways. For our center, we know that as we prepare ourselves, as we expand what we are able and willing to accept, that good comes to us in the form of a loving, compassionate, inspired leader as wholeness, as perfection. And we accept and know that we have the power to do that. We give thanks. We give thanks for this opportunity to together go into this amazing project of creation. We give thanks for what we know will come into our lives and the life of our center. We give thanks for being human for all the emotions we experience, for all the gifts the universe gives us for our awakening. We say thank you, and we let this go with freedom, with ease, ready, willing, and open. And we say together, and so it is. You know, we're going to move now to the part of our service where we talk about giving and receiving. Giving and receiving are powerful creative tools. We know that what we give comes back to us. As we give freely of love, love comes back to us. As we give freely of our financial abundance, more abundance comes to us. 
as we spread out our creative power, our creative endeavors, more ideas come to us to create. So as we go into this time, I encourage you to think about what you're grateful for the many gifts you have. One of my gifts is this center, the connection, the opportunities to grow and learn and share, the opportunity to know all of you. So think about that for a minute as you're preparing your gift. We have many ways that your financial gift can come to us. The easiest way is to use our text to give. Simply text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 702-728-4525. Or at any time you can go to our website and choose the donate button and it will take you to a site where you can put in your name uh, the source place where you want your gift to come from how much you want it to be whether you want it to be a one-time gift or a recurring gift or you can of course mail a check to our center and we welcome all of your ways of giving we want to support you in learning how to experience abundance. That's part of why we return to this idea in every service. So I encourage you, now let's listen to some beautiful music that reminds us of what's possible. This old world starts to push and shove me. I need to be still. Let God love me. I need to relax. Let God take over. I need to relax. Let God take over. And take this load off of my shoulders I need to relax and let God take over I need to be still and let God love me I need to be still and let God love me when this old world starts to push and shove me, I need to be still. Let God love me. I need to be still. And let God love me. Oh, we are so blessed with the musical talents and gifts of the people in our community. If you're like me, it's often music that moves me and inspires me and reminds me of who I am, what's possible. I thank you also for your generous gifts. These gifts make it possible for us to do what we do, to fulfill on our mission of serving you and expanding our reach to reach more and more people. We're so grateful for your financial gifts. And of course, I'm always grateful as well for your love, for your prayers. Often I can feel when people are praying for me and supporting me, and I'm grateful for that. So I wanna to close tonight with a poem by Mary Oliver, I don't know if you know Mary Oliver. She's written some incredible 
beautiful poetry. And here's one that I especially love. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Know you're loved. Know you're blessed. Go forward. Let yourself be inspired. Namaste. Our weekly conversation, Let's Talk, takes place on Zoom right after this celebration service. Today, we'll share a deeper discussion of Reverend Amani's message, Blessitation. If you're viewing this on YouTube, scroll down and click the Let's Talk link to join in. The Zoom invite can also be found in the recently emailed newsletter or on our Facebook page. Join our community conversation immediately following this celebration service. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on Zoom and you're invited to join in. This weekly group discussion focuses on Science of Mind magazine's daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. Spirit is always calling us to step out from the life we have been living and to step up to what is ours to express in the world. We often say that we want to change how we are showing up, but then we do not change. Join Rev. Scott Olson on Sunday, April 25th as he explores how to move from where we are to where our dreams are taking us as he presents Stepping Out, Stepping Up. We gratefully step out of what has been and confidently step up and into our greatness, excited to blaze a new trail of spiritual awareness. What have we learned thus far on our life's path and what gifts are we bringing to the new leg of our journey? What will we share with those who travel with us? Prepare yourself for this message of adventure by first participating in 15 minutes of meditation with licensed practitioner Judy Poteet at 9.45 a.m. The Sunday celebration begins at 10. Affirmative prayer is a powerful and effective spiritual practice. CSL Greater Las Vegas has practitioners who support you spiritually every day. If you would like to reach one of them, visit our website at cslgob.org and click on Prayer Request. Our practitioners are here to remember the truth with you. 